I'm lost in a lake of stars chasing the place where your frame remains standing, where your name hangs in suspended expectation of a life lived longer than your last exhalation. When Aunt Paulette laughed as Michael cut your hair off and in patterns as magic as your laughter, you signed his skin in marker. When no one imagined your body laid down on satin, years shrunk to hours, face framed by flowers, in that glossy brown casket. And so I dismantle the photo albums of family events, but no answer satisfies why you took your own life then, because holiday pictures are given quick fixes, turning relative ways to nostalgic depictions, and memories into keepsakes that lack facts from present understanding, because memories are as relative as family is relating. I suppose it's less about needing to know in something more unspoken, so here I go. Dear cousin, more than DNA and family trees, we shared thoughts of suicide at age 14. I want to skip to the scene where I ask you not to do it. You listen to me and we meet up yearly, recalling our memories like poetry, but this isn't some Shakespearean trope. There are no trophies for distant family who opt for political correctness to avoid the discomfort of bluntness despite knowing their cousin is hopeless. Like a fox with locked jaw, unable to chew, I was tongue-tied and trotted around the issue. Pretending things were beautiful instead of talking to you about the taboo. And when the word suicide sits in your mind, you're unable to distinguish the truth from dark thinking. I know because I've seen my own life turn to sinking. If I had asked you to just speak it, would you have been able to see it? There are pieces of life worth living and that we see people and things not as they are, but proof for the truth we believe, even if it's a lie we allow. I wish I had asked about you more and made the trip to see you and said something to change your mind and that I didn't let the distance between our families define us. I wish I had made suggestions for things to try, like God can take the piss so you can shout at him, like chilling on benches and boring shit, like playing tic-tac-toe and writing poems or making up words with your sister in tow or the arms of your mother like rolling around in the snow, you wouldn't even have to do it excitedly. You could do it half-heartedly like those depressed people you see in movies who turn their lives around somehow. And you might ask me if all this stuff is really better than dying and I would tell you I don't know. But I do know there's hope because I've shook its hand with my heart, I've shook its hand with my throat, or it shook me. Lifeless red made to beating and cylinder made to swallow. So please, just walk around the block or count the hair on your dog's coat or laundry in, out, another load, or fluff your pillow over and over again until it becomes a cloud. Or go to the park and make daisy chains or listen to music so loud the noise replaces your thoughts or oiling your bike chain, anything else until that option is last. But the truth is, biding time is only part of it. It takes a village to treat mental illness.